What's going on guys and welcome back to the most spectacular walkthrough of all times. I meant to say read through of all times. I am the big cliche. I am big Papa Pump without the pump. I am the rocker that is never hard. King Kong got a lot on me I am T B R Terabyte Reacts and I would just like to say you're welcome welcome back guys to another read through of the Berserk manga we are here with volume 9 welcome back welcome back welcome back it has been a while i know stop complaining <laughs> it's been a while your boy has been busy 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 um so i finally get a chance to do berserk i, I even planned to do it like last week and i didn't get a chance to do it um things just keep popping up in my life <laughs> this time of the year and I'll finally get some time now to really settle down this weekend and try to get everything um, that was going on on the channel to actually get going. And it's not really at this point, it's not even really like I'm making excuses. Um, it's more of it's more of like I just I'm just not getting the chance to do reactions like I used to. Um, but we're getting back there. It's just busy season. I'm pretty sure you guys are somewhat busy too. <laughs> you know, you just don't have to do YouTube. Um, so I'm asking you guys to please bear with me. This season will pass. Okay. So let's jump into it, man. Last, um, volume we did, we know that Guts has left the band of the Hawk. He is left. Um, so what's next for him? I don't know if they're going to dive deeper into the background of um, of what happened or what we read um, at the beginning of the manga, if they're going to continue off, off of what happened there of the beatdown from Griffith. We still need to know. We still need to know how Griffith got involved Um with the um what is it the godhead i don't even remember what they call themselves but right so we still need to know how he got involved we know he has the 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 behelot right we know he has that and that must have been the gateway to get with um them you know and then it seems like he's the leader of them now so we, we still need to there's some history there that we still need to know what happened so we're gonna jump into volume nine let's not waste much time here story continues man and i'm excited to find out what's going on nesferatu showed up in the last volume so you want to know i'm not sure how many because i didn't i didn't actually look to see how many um chapters is in this one it seems like it's the same no this is actually wow it's actually 11 chapters man um, we'll see if we get to it. You guys already know, no promises when it comes to getting through these volumes. I'm trying to do volume by volume because there is a lot of volumes out there of Berserk. So we'll see. So let's jump into this, man. And I'll see you guys on the other side. So make sure you leave a like on the video. If you're watching this on YouTube, well, more than likely you are watching this on YouTube. So, um, so yeah. Let's go do this, man. All right. So we're here. I'm trying to do this um, without music or anything, just straight up so that you guys can see this for yourself. So you already know, man, 30 minute breaks, um, 30 minute breaks. You already know because this has to go. On the Google Drive, so we don't want to sit here for two hours because <laughs> um, that video will take forever. Okay, so we got 
names of the chapters here seems awesome so let's just jump in right in night of skeleton looks crazy but <laughs> you already know berserk is nuts in the first place okay so we got an owl got a night drawing berserk um <clears throat> guts out here by himself seems like he's trying to make a fire Here's something. Okay, so there's a wolf or something there. Ah, uh, is it? Why? Why am I so scared? Alone? Yeah, it's been a while since I camped alone like this. When I think about it, I haven't been truly alone once these three years. I've forgotten this sense of unease unless my sword's right next to me i had forgotten that the night was this vast this deep of course i couldn't have avoided nights like this back then i never even thought to try it gets lonely out there when you're by yourself man not with anyone maybe i'm once again trying to throw away something Irreplaceable that I'll never again throw away something irreplaceable. That I'll never have again. To be honest, as long as I can feel warm, isn't that good enough? Am I trying to let go of an irreplaceable today for some vague tomorrow? I might never find, if it even exists. Even without some big exaggerated dream, people go on living. Okay, I'm going to have to take off my logo. Thank you. Getting in my way. All right. In the first place, I got this idea in my head from hearing Griffith's words. If I hadn't, so... Can I say I have set out by my own will? After all, I... And you remember that clown saying you can never become Griffith. That's not today anymore. It's yesterday. Yeah, we all gotta move on. <clears throat> Sorry about that. That was weird. Nose has started burning me. Anyway, let's do this. Alright, so. Still chilling in the night. Seems like something is like shadowing over him or something. What? That is weird. What is that? It, isn't that like two? It's like the shadow of somebody or something. So, he grabs his sword. And he's ready to chop something Woo! is it nesferatu what the hell he turns around he's like what was that that bloodthirstiness a beast no i remember this this is the savagery that feels like it clings could it be wow this luminous over him it blindsided me that easily I couldn't even react I can't move if I move that's when I'll be killed what is going on so he slashes behind him and hits nothing and then realize then it's a skull why is it what what the hell why the why in God's name is there a man with no face <laughs> riding a horse? It just looks like it's a bone horse too. So it's like impossible. I'm sure he was right behind me. I've never misread an enemy's presence once. I could have sworn he was trying to bring his sword down on me. Zod? No, it's not. But this this weird unreal feeling 
So the gears have indeed begun turning. That's what the thing on the horse said. It's like, gears? What's that mean? You, struggler, take heed. He's like, struggler? One year, hence shall be the time of the eclipse. You and your friends, those yet unseen of the fleshless flesh, and that unkingly half of yours, shall all be gathered then in that place. Another prophecy. A torrent of madness, a tempest of death, for which the human body could never atone, shall sweep over you. But take heed, struggler. You were born from a corpse and began your life from death in the mud. You are closer to death than anyone. Thus, you excel in escaping. And Guts is like, who is this? Struggle, contend, wriggle. That alone is the sword of one who confronts death. death. Never forget this. Because it's like, who the hell are you? How do you know about me? In the abyss of despair, only he who stands up with broken sword in hand, perhaps. Guts is like, wait. An illusion? No. The Night of Skeleton. The Night of Skeleton. So he was okay. So he responded to him. I'm guessing. Okay. So we're okay. So now the snow will melt. Please hurry to bed, Your Highness. You will catch cold. Yes, you are dismissed for the day. Your Highness seems depressed. That she does. Lord Julius, Lord Adonis, and even Her Majesty the Queen have all died in succession. I'd be gloomy too if I lost three relatives in a row. But Lord Julius and Lord Adonis aside, Her Highness disliked Her Majesty so much. Don't be foolish. So much the more because they were, after all, parent and child. It's like she hated her mom. So... <clears throat> Okay, so Griffith comes up to her room, the princess. He's like, uh, is something the matter? So she's like, it's nothing. Go, go, because Griffith is coming through the window. So she opens the window. She's like, Lord, Lord Griffith, what in the world are you doing in the rain at this hour? Good evening, Princess Charlotte. It would cause a terrible uproar if it were known that a gentleman had entered the palace alone this late if anyone were to see you Griffin is like therefore if her highness doesn't object would she permit me to enter her room if someone were to see me now it would inflict damage upon your honor besides it's rather difficult to keep one's balance out here yes of course come in your pardon. Forgive me for dripping so much water into a lady's chambers and for my impoliteness in visiting so late. And she hugs him or whatever. You know, the that thing that women do. <laughs> right, so she starts crying. She's like, I've missed you since that day half a year ago. Ever since we parted that morning, you went, you went to war. I've been so, so scared ever since that day you left. I'd wake up so many times, breathless from nightmares that you had died on the battlefield. And then once you came back safely, that dreadful thing happened at the victory ball. I passed out when I woke up, then it was my stepmother my stepmother, who I never did manage to come to terms with. I didn't even try. Nothing but frightening and sad things have happened. I've been so alone. Why? Why didn't you come? Come to see me sooner than this. So Griffith stubborn down. Oh! Damn, Griffith!
Griffith? You just gonna put the lips on her like that? Damn! Well, hello, Princess Charlotte. Pretty boy swag over here. <laughs> you know, you know, he always princing, so. <laughs> he always princing, so let's get it, man. Start off the everlasting night. Next chapter. Cool. So Griffith kisses her. And kisses her again. Damn, they even showing the tongue action? Damn. Well, hello. Damn. Griffith is giving her everything she wanted. So they're kissing. Wait a second. We don't need the details, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't want to feel like I'm out here reading an anti-comic right now. Like, we know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, damn, he, he, he putting the moves on her. He holding the boobs. He, he, damn, bro. Damn, he pushes her on the bed. He's like, listen, man. This is what I came for, okay? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he looks at her, throws her down on the bed, gets over her, and is like, are you afraid? Take all the frightening and sad things and cast them into the fire as he pulls up her dress. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've never, I've never directed uh, a nasty novel. I've, I've never read a nasty novel, okay? I don't know how to, to read this to y'all. I don't know. I don't even know how this is going to go over on YouTube with me narrating this this part of the story right now. So I'm trying to break it up some so YouTube doesn't catch on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's basically telling a porno story right now. But anyways, and cast them into the fire. <laughs> And she's, she's in, damn, they naked already? Okay, it's over. <laughs> All right, so he got what he wanted, I'm guessing. Okay, so, all right. So it's like, it sure is raining. And it also goes to kind of, um, to show you that, you know, Griffith's aim in life, like, his aim, what he really wants, wanting the kingdom, a kingdom of his own. Like, he, he has taken the necessary steps. I don't know if he's going to get knocked down at some point. You know, I don't know. I don't know what is going to happen. But he sure is moving quickly. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. So, it, it sure is raining. So, Casca comes in. She's like, have you guys seen Griffith? No, Griffith is having a lot of fun right now. Uh, I... I listen at this point it's not about Costco like Costco and Costco and guts that's who we ship that's who I'm shipping right that's the relationship I want to happen I don't want to see Costco and Griffith together I think she loves them both but I think she has a better connection with guts so so she's asking for Griffith and He's like, isn't that right, Shay's show, Little Rickard? Hope, I haven't seen him since what happened today. So she still has Guts' broken sword for some reason. She's walking and she's hugging the sword. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, her connection to Guts is, is way better. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's pure. It's honest. They got to know each other. She, he saved her multiple times and she and he also believes in her so she has a deeper connection to him and oh that we're back to the porn <laughs> we are we're oh damn we got lit what what is going bruh we can't be showing these panels <laughs> these bad listen man that's why I made sure that with the new YouTube um, guidelines, I made sure that I let them know my stuff is not for kids, man. Don't be advertising. Uh, don't be, 
you know what I'm saying? Like recommending my stuff to kids accounts, bro. Like everything that I do over here is for adults, man. Like I don't do anything for kids. Like it's not a this is not a gaming channel, okay? It's not for kids. This this is some um, this is I expect them to I mean, we've seen you know what I'm saying? The teddies. We, we've seen all that stuff in Berserk before. But this is the sex scene this guy is drawing right now. This is... Ugh, come. He going in. Bro, he licking teddies and everything. <laughs> what the hell is going on here? Bro. He is going in, my guy. What? He's like... You believe that, don't you? Is he thinking about guts right now, bruh? Now is not the time. Better get in between those legs. <laughs> like, yo, what am I reading? Damn, he really drew the whole scene. Like, I thought it was over. It's like, take care. So he's thinking about guts right now and giving her the business. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Damn, bro. I cannot believe that this is not... This manga is not for kids, bro. It is not for kids. Oh, my God. Bro. Meanwhile, Ka <laughs> All right. So, Casca, I don't know who she's thinking about, but as I was saying, so... Seems like somebody outside of the room. Oh, damn. This is bad. One of the maids is going to peep through the, the door because she heard the noises coming from the room. She peeps through the door, sees them going at it. She walks away, I guess. Okay, so everybody's tired now. <laughs> Everybody's tired now, so let's get on with it, right? So, we have... Griffith um, holding on to this, this a scar. He looks like a scar, the scar on his shoulder. All right. So she wakes up, it looks like it's morning, and Griffith is gone. So she's like, Lord Griffith. Nah, Griffith dipped. <laughs> he like, hit it and quit it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He probably went, he probably left because he didn't want to get caught in the room. Alright, so. Yeah, he left or something on the bed. Cool, cool beans. Okay, so. She says, ow, what happened? What is she looking at? Something happened to her? Uh-oh. Why is she bleeding? Was she, she, I mean, more than likely she was a virgin, so it, probably. Why? That looks like that's blood on the sheets. So that might give them away if they find blood on the sheets. Anyways, but yeah, so somebody jumps down. Griffith, is that Griffith? Who is this? Who is this person? Is that Griffith? I'm guessing that it is. Okay, so there's a battle going on. Or, oh, not a battle. They are, I think they found out because that made probably... Oh, why are they? All right, so they're surrounding Griffith right now. It's like, well, well, if it isn't His Excellency, the future White Phoenix General, why on earth is the White Hawk sneaking out of the palace at this hour? And he's like, right, my sword. No doubt the details will be determined without haste later. Circumstances pending, you may have committed treason against Midland's royal house. Take him away. Okay. So I beg you, wait, your majesty. In any case, 
This is the word of an inexperienced court lady. Perhaps she mistook what she saw in the dark. To suspect her highness based on that. He's like, silence, father. Okay, so, so he going to check on her. Because, you know, the maid spoke. He's like, whatever is the matter, come in here so early. Even if you are my father, you should never just barge into an adolescent girl's room without permission. How thoughtless. Please depart. So he looks at her and she looks at him and he's like, Father. And he grabs the sheet and she's like, D don't. <laughs> she, and so he pulls off, pulls off the sheet. Oh uh, crap, and he sees the blood. So, yep, she's like, and he's like, Charlotte. So, this is a problem now because it, it, she was a virgin. She was a virgin, more than likely, her hymen broke. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it's going to leave blood on the sheet. So, yeah. So what now? Okay, so Griffin is captured. So, oh my God. So this is the downfall. This is how Griffin. Yo, so this is how Griffin falls? No way, bro. I was not expecting. I was not expecting this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like this is how Griffin falls. Ah, it's like every great man, huh? Every great man is always the Tanani. <laughs> Always the Punani man. <laughs> oh my god. The fallen hawk. Oh my god. So the king walks in and he's like, Griffin. He's like, if I had if it had been my great hope that someday you would have shouldered a large part of Midland's army as a military genius. Those words I said to you then were no fiction. I know the king really did believe in him, though. So it must be very disappointing for him. Um, he could have went about it the legitimate way to get with her. I think it was kind of like he preemptively did something that got him in trouble for no reason. It's not something he had to do now. You know what I'm saying? He could have gotten, he could have married that princess and the king would have gave, gave the blessing 100%. Like, the king believed in him that much. So, he's like, there were not a few who slandered your group as a band of thieves, but I didn't think so. Yeah, we, we know. <laughs> we know you were you were on the band of the ox, you know, wagon from from the get-go. From the first time they proved themselves, you loved you loved them. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like each time the band of the hawk distinguished itself on a battlefield, it heightened my assertion. For some time, I've held that a knight's merit is not derived from lineage or social position. Wow. So that's pretty cool that, that he actually thinks that because defying everything that everybody else was saying, the council and everybody, he really, really, really was like pulling for them and nobody else could really say anything because he's king, of course. But he goes on to say, but that the stress should instead be placed on his actions and use of resources, right? You know, which is great. It's awesome. You know what I mean, damn, he, yo, he whipping Griffith himself, my guy. It's like, however, yo, he is whipping him. A thief is still a thief. Was your common blood not good enough? I don't know why he like. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, why did Griffith do this? Like. There was no reason. He's like, my foolish daughter. It's as if she doesn't understand what it means to be of her status. The importance of the succession of royal blood. The princess of a kingdom behaves with the rashness of some towns girl. Her frivolity is excessive. Even that foolish, frivolous girl is everything to me. Damn, he hitting him in the face too. I would give myself even this kingdom in exchange for her. She's my whole life. 
he's pissed. And I would be pissed too. <laughs> I am not going to lie. At, um, if I was the dad in that position, I would be pissed. Because he, he could have went through the proper channels and got my blessings. You get what I'm saying? Because it's not like the dude did not like Griffith. Because he wouldn't have been constantly promoting him. You know what I'm saying? So more more than anything, I mean, I wouldn't torture a dude. But you know what I'm saying? But I would be just as mad as he is because he did that. Because I've been in this situation before, story time, okay, before we take our first break here to go into the next part. I've been in this situation before. Um, where, but this was like a brother, brother, sister relationship. This happened with my sister, right? My dad is not in the United States. You know, my dad is still back in Jamaica. So, um, I was more or less likely, um, the one that was kind of like be that big brother to my little sister. So, you know, when she was a certain age, she, you know, she started to, you know, become promiscuous and stuff like that. So it was like, um, she didn't want to let us know that she was sexually active and all of this other stuff, but I knew, but I didn't give her flack for it. I just tell her, I said, if this is going to, you know, make sure you're, make sure you're being safe. I want a problem. Do what you want to do. It's your body. Do whatever you want to, you want to do. You are of age. You know what I'm saying? You have that age. You're, you're curious and stuff like that. You can do that. Just be safe and make sure that, you know what I'm saying? That you're keeping your schoolwork up. Mind you, she was not doing that, the latter part of it. So it was just more like sneaking out at night. You know what I'm saying? Like, <clears throat> you know, coming home after curfew and stuff like that. Stuff like that really pissed me off because I'm like, this guy has no respect for us, for her own family. And that's what I was trying to relate to her. I'm like, a guy who respects your family and respects you doesn't go out of his way. Because it's not like we would have said no. We weren't saying no to the relationship. My mom wasn't saying no to the relationship. We were saying that these things that you're doing is wrong. This, this sneaking out of the house at night you know, coming in after hours, you know, you're not supposed to because, you know, my mom is at work and stuff like that. Like that was not cool with me. You know what I'm saying? And she was saying, why are you so angry about the situation and all this other stuff? And I'm like, I'm angry because you're with someone who doesn't respect anybody else but themselves. You know what I'm saying? The very selfish, but she couldn't understand what I was saying because she was enjoying herself. So she didn't understand what I was trying to portray to her, eventually things came around. It came to a point where, you know what I'm saying? Um, everybody has come to accept them and, and, and stuff like that. And things blew over. You know what I'm saying? There's no hard feelings. You know what I'm saying? Because they got older. So as they get older, you basically, in a way, in my opinion, for me, I just don't care anymore. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because now they're of age, they can do whatever they want and stuff like that. But um, she, she did have to, you know what I'm saying? She lost a lot of what she could have gained because of how the relationship was going during her teenage years. So it was like, for me, it was like all of that time could have been used better. You know what I'm saying? It could have been used better. It could have been done. It could have benefited her better. Cause a lot of things that she's trying to catch up on now she could have been doing that. You know what I mean? So, it, it, so you know, she learned a lesson. She learned a lesson to end the story. <laughs> but anyways, okay. So, King keeps on to beat Griffith. End of the story, guys. <laughs> and now we're going to go to part two. So, we'll take a break here. Come back for part two. Okay. And we are back. Okay. So... King keeps on to beat Griffith. I totally understand where the king is coming from. Um, he doesn't deserve... I mean, Griffith doesn't deserve to be tortured for it, but this is a different time. <laughs> so it's like, what value is there in this world? Wars rage on and the people's lives are lost like they were insects. After how many decades of war and how many tens of thousands of corpses, we finally built a time of remembered peace, but it's only for an instant. 
On the underside, the monster named War is always seeking new blood, starting to brew itself anew. In the face of that monster, the will of the land's king is powerless. The wisdom of one man is folly, and yet I cannot cease being king. There's no way I can stop. In this blood-stained, meaningless world, if there is one single ray of hope to be found, if it is warmth, only warmth covers and protects me from this world. Damn, he's beating the shit out of Griffith right now. So, you've taken the one flower that gives me that warmth and plucked it. Unforgivable. Ah, alas, my poor Charlotte. I've brought her up for 17 years. She knowing no impurity now that she's given herself up to the sport of a commoner. I'd rather, I'd rather that... That you rather, that you rather, oh, he says something, to have been with Princess Charlotte, would have had her yourself, no, so damn, Griffith is teasing this dude right now, he's like, did you wish to have her for yourself, he's like, don't you want her to have you, and she's like, and the king responds, he's like, what, what, what are you? So Griffith is like, I had thought it was strange. And Princess Charlotte, I never got any hint of that. Of him wanting Charlotte. Like, I never got any hint of that. He's like, in Princess Charlotte's 17 years, there must have been many profitable proposals of marriage. Rather, political marriage is a way of the world for war and nations, but you've refused to let go of her. The great king on the throne of Midland, once renowned, with majesty throughout all lands, is actually nothing more than a lonely, miserable old man who can't find any reason to live beyond his beloved 17-year-old daughter. Wow, he's teasing the hell out of him right now. You've lived on by resigning yourself to the monster you envision, but you've by no means tried to harness that monster. While you were born to the sword, called his throne and held it it was nothing more than a burden to you you've done nothing more than f not fail how worthless and he's laughing <laughs> it's like silence <laughs> you know <laughs> that was gonna come damn he is beating the sh <laughs> yo be silent what the hell do you know? What does a fool like you know of being king? The land, the history, the lives of the people all on your shoulders. What do you know? Damn, even the guards are there shocked because he's going in. He's going ham on Griffith right now. All right, so... Griffith is still like staring him down. So the king is like, fine then. I wonder if that look will last forever. Torturer? Shire. Damn, this dude is ugly. And he's going to torture Griffith? Oh my god. But what's with all this torture? What is this going to do? Just kill the dude. <laughs> if you're going to kill him, just kill him. I mean, what's with all this torture? I mean... He's not denying that he did something. He can't deny it because he got caught coming out of the palace. So he can't deny what happened. So I'm saying, what's the sense of torture? Like, if you're you're planning to kill him, that's what I, I'm thinking. You know, it's just like, yes, I am. Do whatever you wish with this man. He has sinned gravely against Midland's royal house. And he's like, you're shirting? You're shirting? <laughs> However, you must not kill him. However feebly, he shall live another year. So they want to torture this man for a year? Oh my God. He shall be made to see the gravity of his crimes while he yet draws breath. So the torturer is happy. Like, listen, I forbid you to tell anyone 
anything about this. By my royal judicial power, I charge this man personally with treason against Midland's royal house. I must somehow protect my daughter's dignity. Ha ha. That's... But, but that was for her to to do though like at the same time like you can't you can't protect her from what she just did she liked the dude and she let him in it was mutual so he continues to say if i were to hear hear about this from anyone else even just a trifle or a trifle whatever they and their entire household without exception will be sentenced to death and they're like, yes, sire. <laughs> the guards are like, I ain't telling nobody. I don't want you with me, bro. <laughs> like, you were young. No doubt your heart burned with dreams and ambition. If you had but known your place, you might possibly have attained them. No, this must have been because you're young. It's disappointing that the White Hawk of the battlefield would destroy himself over such a worthless matter. I never would have guessed. I would have never guessed either. <laughs> this is the end of your dreams, your ambition, everything. The hawk has fallen to earth. It will never take flight again. Hmm. Where is Charlotte? Who's asking for Charlotte? I guess the king is. Until a bit ago, she had been crying, but the doctor gave her medicine and she just fell asleep. Until I say otherwise, no one is to come near this room. And triple the current number of palace guards. And Charlotte is sleeping. She says, Charlotte sits down on the bed beside her. The years have so brought out her mother's face. So he touched these lips. This nigga really has something for his daughter, doesn't he? You freaking pervert. Pervert, pedophile, whatever you want to call them. Creep. <laughs> this dude really has something for his daughter. Like, for real, it's like, so this body was touched by his tongue, his fingers. This dude really has something for his daughter, Griffith. What? No way. Bro. Cut. This dude is out here filling up his daughter's boobs, bruh. Taking her... What? This guy. He... No! What a douche! This dude... Re I was really doubting that. But Griffith was on the money! She wakes up. Dude, she wakes up. Oh my God, this dude licking his daughter's titties. Holding her down. She's trying to pull herself away from him. She says, no. That like, yes, worthless. This is worthless. Damn, bro. That is crazy. I had no idea. Like, there was no hint of him wanting that. So, it was like, I had the utmost respect for him. But now, no. This guy's a freaking douche, a pervert, a pedophile. Whatever you want to call him, man. Dude. Dude on that incest shit, bro. Come on, man next chapter so she pulls herself away there's no this dude wants his daughter she pushes him off on the ground i don't know what makes you think she she would want you i don't know it's like wait charlotte i what she was gonna say like you lost control <laughs> You need to go. You need to be the one in the torture chamber. It's like I. Ah. Uh, look at this dude, man. So he pounces at her again, holds her down, bro. He's on top of her. 
licks her lips. She kicks him in the face, right? Kicks him in the face again. She, she's crying out for Griffith. He's like prying her legs open, bro. Like this dude is serious. He keeps getting kicked in the face and he, how is it that nobody, nobody is coming into this room right now? How is it that nobody is coming into this room right now? Please tell me that somebody is going to come and stop this. Is he finally going to give up? Okay, so he, he looked like he ran, he, he ran out of the room. So she's like, save me, Lord Griffith. Save me. Okay. So he runs out the room. He's like, damn you, damn you, Griffith. Yeah. You should have lost some more teeth. <laughs> Lucky that's all you're losing. She should have had something to stab you in the eye or something. Anyway, so we got Casca here. They don't know what's going on with Griffith because nobody knows where he is. They don't even know that nobody said, tell, told him anything. So, they're like, what could this be about? Griffith calling us out here suddenly. I'm guessing training. Oh, so they got fooled. Oh, my God. Ah. They're like, I'm guessing training. So, they got fooled into think called out. I wonder if they're going to, like, kill them all or something. So without any in equipment, then it's right in practice, right? Oh shit! So they got called out there with no equipment, no weapons, no nothing. So they can't even defend themselves if they should be like ambushed. So he never came back to the barracks yesterday. I guess he really was in shock. Like dumbass, is Griffith the type who'd let that get him down? He was out having fun, fun. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but. Will you give it a rest? Look here, Griffith ain't gonna fall apart just because that jerk split. Corcus, you think you you do you really think that he did what he did because Guts left though? Like I don't I don't know, I don't know. Cause I mean he was thinking about Guts while he was laying the pipe. You know what I'm saying? But it's I don't know. Did he have some? thing for grip for guts i don't know i don't know i don't want to go that i don't know if i want to think that but maybe there maybe it caused him to do what he did or maybe he felt like he didn't know what to do and i don't know griffith just seems like a very a stronger character than that to me he just seems like a, a stronger character than that for him to to do that because a friend left <laughs> you know what i'm saying to put you know to take that kind of risk just because Guts left, I don't see that. So they're like Captain Guts. So they remember him, Guts. Casca is like thinking about it, but she doesn't want to say anything. So still, Griffith is sure late. So Griffith hears something. It looked like a tree snapped or something. And Pippin hears it. And he says, What's up? And turn on the What's up, Pippin? So you're like, everyone take cover. Pippin, Pippin shouted. <sniffs> yep. Arrows, arrows coming from above. Damn, bro. They got ambushed. And they can't even fight back. It's like, what? What the enemies? Damn, they take it to the face. Oh shit. It looked like Jado got hit. They're like, look. Bro, the whole freaking army, my guy. So they're like, troops? Has Truder driven across the border? No, that's Midland, the Midland army. And they're closing in, still hitting them. They're like, son of a bitch, what the hell's going on? Are we are we gonna bite it here? Yeah, if y'all don't get the hell out of there. Damn, Pippin is out here blocking arrows with his arm, bro. Like, 
this dude is a monster. Anyway, so a bunch of them got killed. So they're like, so Kasuke is trying to get them in order. It's like, form ranks. If we scatter and run, we're all dead. They're like, why? Why is this happening? You don't want to know. Get into wedge. Get into wedge formation. Why? We'll break through at one point and escape. Sis, look out. Damn, I've been not killed Casca. Like Griffith. Uh, it's like you're amazing. Fish much torture and you haven't made a peep. I guess and he has a lisp. <laughs> I've never seen such that's the leader of the Hucks <laughs> or uh, for ya. I'm so moved. Letting me do whatever I want with such a beautiful, splendid one like you. The king so gracious. <laughs> and now he's about to touch the behemoth. He takes it off. He's like, oh, that's great. Neat. Can I keep this? <laughs> Looks at it he's like, yeet, what a waste. I went and dropped it. Damn, he dropped it in the sewer. This bitch ass. <laughs> anyway, so the Bahile goes in the water. Next chapter, Armed Startment. So, Band of the Hawk is under attack, which I suspected from the moment they were drawn out there without no weapons. We know Griffith is in jail, and they said that Griffith called him out there. I knew it was going to be an ambush. All right, so... Ah, uh, so um, what is this? What is going on here? Somebody jousting? Okay, so they're just a jousting, whatever. Like some games or something. A tournament? That's the name of the chapter. So I was like, ooh, what heroism? Yes, sir. My combat tournament has become quite famous in many countries over the years. Who is this guy? It's really started to draw in some strong ones. Mass of this tournament's featured bout is beginning. Ooh, the, on one side is the mercenary Valencia, also known as the King of Massacre. A wild beast said to have claimed the lives of 130 Midland soldiers in the previous 100-year war. On the other side is this tournament's dark, dark horse, a newcomer using strange weapons and techniques who continues to cut a swath through the competition. That's a girl, ain't it? Looks like a girl. Could be a dude, too. The, the enigmatic warrior from a strange land, Silat. Hmm, this will be a sight. So they go at it. And why does it look like this guy just one hit or quitter this dude? He pulls his sword. Or did he miss? He missed. Do this quick. <laughs> Do this quick. It's like, oh, Valencia's doing all the pushing. But he just barely dodges each blow. So what is this? A fight to the death? Bro, that dude just got clocked in the head by by dude. He just kicked him in the face while blocking his sword. That's crazy. It's like now nah, his foot. <laughs> Damn. So he blocks it again. Another block. They're going at it. Boom. Oh, damn. Are you going to surrender now, sir? Now that I have your neck in my sights? It's like, cutting your sword in two by simultaneously slashing from both sides is simple. Cutting your head off would be the same. <laughs> so he he's like, I submit. How sportsmanlike. The sword arts this land... The sword arts of this land are dull and narrow-minded. In the face of my deeply rooted hand-to-hand -hand fighting style, they remind me of children swinging sticks. <laughs> oh, that turban man did it. Oh, uh, he seems certainly he will win the tournament this time. Oh, shit, Guts is here. <laughs> Guts is here. Guts is here. 
So, so I want to see. So he's like, hmm, still, for a foreigner to win with so little op opposition, I feel slightly put out. It would seem this arms tournament is no more than a sword rusting farce. And then Guts walks up. Looking like a beast, of course. He's like, who's that to man? Hey, pal, I'm next. Wait your turn, okay? It's like, it looks open to me. Don't get so wound up. This is a festival. It's like, hey. So, from where I was standing, it looked like you wanted to fight somebody tougher. What do you say? Wanna have a go? <laughs> it's like, are you saying you're strong? Stronger than he was? I'd say you'll know it when you try, right? Do I get a say in this? It's the um the moderator. <laughs> He's like, I don't object. But what says the sponsor? They're like, Master? Mm. All right. I'll allow it. Give us an entertaining sideshow. It's like, see, he gets it. <laughs> They're like, very well then. But sideshow or not, you sought this yourself. I assume you're prepared. Take your stance. Come on, anytime. What you... He's like, what? You'll use no stance? Like, you mean to win by using that freakishly massive sword to keep me at a distance. But then, your style of swordplay can't restrain my movements. Sounds pretty sensible. What with that narrow-mindedness or whatever you said. Don't sweat the details. This is a festival after all. He's like, very well. A festival without blood is a rather boring thing. So he goes in for the stab to Guts' face. And Guts is like, he's quick. And Guts is just dodging him like, bruh, you're moving in slow motion right now, bro. Try harder. <laughs> now I'm saying. So he's just like dodging it. He's like. So everybody's like, oh, it's the reverse of last time. So now, so he's like, what happened? So he goes in for the kick with the knife. He looks like he has a knife in his boots. Goes in for the kick to try and get Guts slipping. Shocked. <laughs> and he blocks his, um, Guts blocks his foot. And he comes up with the other foot. Damn, he's nimble as hell. Hey, yeah. Guts dodges it with his with his hand again. He's like, both hands are barred. Now he now he gonna go in for the kill. With damn, this dude is nimble. He's flexible. So he's going in for the stab from the front. On God, it's like ah, it's no use. Damn, yo, guts, <laughs> guts is out here playing with this guy. Like he just pulls his sword and knocks him down and send him flying. He's tumbling and bumbling. <laughs> He's like, you might want to stick to street performing. <laughs> he's like, oh, he, he did it. <laughs> hey, you there. Impressive, most impressive. What do you say? Would you like to work for me? I'll pay well. Before long, there's to be a large-scale robber hunt inside my territory. This tournament was also to rally soldiers for that. Sorry. I'm not interested. I just want to try my hand at strong opponents. Haha. <laughs> oh, are you on peregrination? <laughs> peregrination? What is that? I'm going to have to look up that word. I don't know what that means. It's like, okay, so I'm guessing that um, peregrination, I guess that's why they have that in Star Beside. It's like a knight. A night on a journey for the sake of learning training. So that's what, so I'm guessing that's what a peregrine is. 
or peregrination is the journey? I don't know. <laughs> I'm guessing. So, well, something like that. So that in that case, rest assured, they say that the woman boss of those bandits is such a good sword fighter, even 10 large men couldn't defeat her. And, it, and he's like, a woman? Surely word of its reach your ears too by now. They're a former mercenary group who caused an uprising a year ago in Windham. Bandits band. Seems they were very active in the Hundred Year War. Ah, uh, who were those bandits? What you just say? Right. The Band of the Hawk. I'm guess maybe it's Casca? The Band of the Hawk and their woman boss. Casca. So, what is this, a year later? So she survived. So they got out. So I'm guessing this is a year later. It's like the fugitives. Okay, so it was like we finally found it. The Hawks hideout. So they escaped. Right, so they escaped. And now they found him again. So Casca got out. It was like, if you push yourself too hard, you won't last. Judo, I know how you feel, but you're essentially the band of the Hawks leader now. Everyone's worn out from living so long as fugitives. If you were to collapse now, she's like, I know. Word just came back from the group we slipped into Windham. Griffith is in the very lowest level of Windham Castle. Seems he's confined in a really old underground prison. He's been tortured for a year, and still it goes on. Several people have heard something between screams and moans in a voice like Griffith's coming from the prison. But in the past month, even that's come to an end. Everyone's at the peak of exhaustion. We can't take much more of this fugitive life. If we don't hurry... So he's... Jado touches her, says, have faith. Have more faith in your companions. Sure, we're the ones who lifted you up as our leader, but is there any need to burden yourself with everything? Each one of us does nothing more than what he can, Judo. You'd, re you'd better rest up. With a tired mind, you can't even plan how to rescue Griffith. So anyway, eat, then sleep. Your eyes are baggy. <laughs> You're right. You know. Thanks. All right. So we got her trying to eat. And then she starts crying. And what happened here? Why is she? Yeah. <sighs> it's like, how's Casca? She'll rest some. That's best. She hasn't slept at all lately. She's actually doing very well. If she hadn't taken command at once a year ago, the Band of the Hawk might have been wiped out on those hunting grounds. That's true. If she hadn't been acting leader afterwards, too, I don't know whether everyone would have survived till today or not. Huh, survive, huh? So what if we survive? All we're doing is running around because we don't want to die. Even if we survive all right to start over from scratch in some other country, it'll be no use. How many years do you think it took us to get as far as we did? It'll never go that way again. Without Griffith, the band of the Hawks, just a rabble anyway. What are you saying? That's why we're all going to try to break Griffith out. You got any proof? He's still alive? To be honest, ain't it all over and gone and more? This dude, how is he still with the group, man? He's one of the most negative people I've ever come across in life. This dude, man. Oh, my God. Like, he's like, what are you talking about? Then why are you here, Corcus? Why didn't you go with the others who left? For real, I'm tired of him. Rickert, if only he were here right now. Okay, somebody. 
bruh. I saw this thing. I didn't even know. Yo, some bro is these guys. What are they? Assassins? Bro, they found them. They're like, this guy is an assassin. It's like, not even enough time for a decent reaction. Now to see if the renowned Band of the Hawk really is prey worthy of fighting arts. Who is this guy, man? Let's go. Damn, bro, they're under attack again. They're like, enemy raid, enemy raid. She tries to grab her sword. She comes out. It's like, the enemy's on the north side of the forest. Units three and four meet their charge. Everyone else get the wounded into wagons and on horseback, then to open ground to the, so to the south. Immediate adaptation and command ability. Nothing less from the much rumored boss of the Hawks. I'm impressed. But in any kind of battle, the moment the leader's head is taken is the moment the outcome is decided. Prepare yourself. So she stands up. She's like, wearing a sword means you're a warrior. And I won't hold back because you're a woman. And he's like, take this. She goes in. Look like Asuka is blocking it. And she dodges the, the, the leg, you know, because they have blades in their boots. Almost got her. She going in for the for the chop under the arm. She got hit on the ground. But she dodges. She's dodging. She's dodging. She back flipping. Ha ha ha. So everyone, Jado is worried about her. He's like, Casca, how does he move like this? I can't counter. Ooh. So she got the, the knives around her head. She's like trapped. It's like, the fight is mine. If you throw down your sword and order your men to surrender, fine. If not, I cut off your head here and now. I counter three. You should choose one, two, three, and Guts is here. <laughs> Please cut this man's head off, Guts. <laughs> Please cut his head off. Four. <laughs> I'm guessing Guts is the one that says four. And kicks him. <laughs> kicks him. And it's like, okay. And they're like, uh, they're like, don't let some street perfor performer do you in. It's like, pull yourself together, unit commander. Ha <laughs> ha. That's the end of the chapter. Great stuff. Great stuff. Guts and Casca reunion after a year. Nobody knows what's going on with Griffith. They don't know. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure Guts doesn't know what's going on. So everybody's like, Guts, Raiders, Captain Guts, yee, 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 Guts, yay, woohoo. <laughs> so Guts is here, the fighter. So Kasuka is like, Guts, huh? So that's it. You are that famous hundred man killer, the captain of the band of the Hawks, Raiders. No wonder you're so tough. Hey, no time for slouching. He and I have got a bit of business. Leave this to me and take care of your own job. This too is divine grace. Here, I'll wash away the shame from the arms tournament. Nah, bro, you gonna die this time. Ain't no surrendering. You gonna die this time. Now, I wonder if you can defeat these unfamiliar weapons. These chakrams. <laughs> So, your next feats, ring tossing? <laughs> Yo, Guts is trolling this man. So your next trick is ring tossing? <laughs> like, you really do remind me of a street performer, but you stink as a swordsman. 
It's like, Chakram, don't laugh. These aren't just throwing rings. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like, oh, no, guts, those are... It's like, once they fly off these fingers, they go to take off your head and welcome and, and become angels halos. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it that authors always make these throwaway characters so like funny? <laughs> it's like anybody who's always talking about their moves before they do them, it, you know what I'm saying? Like you just know they ain't gonna last very long. So he throws it. He throws it. God sees it. He's like, "What are you up to?" Hmm. Like, you're due. <laughs> They're like, watch out. Chakram can change direction on their own. It can change direction on their own. So one is coming at Guts' heads. And he just catches them on the hilt of his sword. And punches. He catches it on the hilt of his sword. And then punches the others away. It's like, impossible. You mean you judge the paths of two Chakram at the same time? Not at all. It's just like swatting flies, right? I might have been in trouble with two or three more of them. Let's let's see. Like this. <laughs> like whoops. <laughs> Very well. Then I shall add those two or three more then. So he like throws why did he take out his he takes out some little swords or whatever with what <laughs> what is going on right now this guy is a joke it's like who rule, who rule me <laughs> who rule me the name means thunder <laughs> you even talk like an entertainer where do you pull those from They're like what's with those weapons as the name suggests its power is like a thunderclap and it's the mightiest within my arsenal. Drink of it deeply. <laughs> Sounds like what a bunch of ribbons and stuff. I don't know what the hell that is, but it's weird. <laughs> so he goes after guts with these ribbon looking things. They probably like maybe carbon fiber. I don't know. Bruh, you gonna mess up the coat so so he dodges. Guts dodges it and was like, nicely dodged. Excellent reflexes, but how long can you keep running? One Irumi consists of five blades that move like whips and cut like a weasel slash, and I can manipulate each blade individually. How will you dodge blades from ten directions at once? Oh, you actually caught guts in the face? Okay. You're like, wait, Judo. Never mind him. You take command of units three and four. But, hurry! Like, he's fine. When he gets that look in his eye, he doesn't need help. So, so dude over here, like, the street performer, <laughs> is like, here I come. And Guts is just casually dodging. It's like, it really is sharp as a weasel scratch. <laughs> Damn. Oh my god, so he's going in. Somebody gets caught in it. Damn. Yo! Bruh. He got messed up by that thing, man. It's like, I'm honestly surprised that there's anyone who can dodge the Rumi this long. But however, much, but however much you run, you'll end up like that man. It's a matter of time until your skin is sliced off like an apple peel. <laughs> okay, so Guts grabs his, his sword with two hands. You know, we're getting serious now. He goes in. He's like, what are you doing? Knowing you can't run, you're facing me? What can you do in such a brief instance from that low stance? It's impossible to stop the Urumi from, with your sword. A swordsman as skilled as you should know that. Have you thrown the fight? 
And he looks at him and he's like, those aren't the eyes of a dead man. <laughs> those aren't the eyes of a dead man. So be it. I accept this challenge of yours. Suffer the dance of ten blades. <laughs> he goes in. Griffith, um, not Griffith. Gut steps up. Slashes. Slashes. What happened? He's like, what? Ear pressure? Man, hit you with the, the, the <laughs> he hit you, he hit you with the, with the, with the, um, the Ichigo move, man, from, from Bleach. <laughs> he hit you, he, he hit you with the move, with the move, man, with the gust of wind, like ear pressure. <laughs> so he goes in bra he he tries to block guts from up close you never do that bro not when guts is swinging a sword you don't do that you will get sliced in half my friend you will get sliced in half so Guts cuts, cuts through everything and breaks all of his swords. He's like, ah, oh, switching weapons on the fly. Not too shabby. <laughs> he's like, filthy cur. Cur. I don't know what that means, but Master Silat, it's no use. We're being routed. Guts, was it? I'll remember your name. So he escapes with his life, and they left. Okay. So they retreated. Next chapter. All right. Let's stop here, take a break here, come back for the next one. All right. New chapter. Which chapter is this? Comrades in Arms. Okay. I don't know how close we are to the end because it's 11 chapters in this one. So... We'll see how things go. It's like, ugh. So everybody's surrounding Guts, of course. Hi, right, Rickard, still alive, huh? Okay, so everybody's like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Of course, Corcus is not happy about this. <laughs> it's like, Captain Guts, all the raiders, Captain Guts. <laughs> everybody's smiling except Corcus. He's like, you guys... We don't have time to stand around. The enemy will come back. We move while it's still dark. Unit 1, secure the camp's perimeter. perimeter. Units 2 and 3, carry out the arms and provisions that weren't burned. Everyone else, gather up the horses that ran off earlier. Like Casca. We'll talk later. I think she feel maybe feels some sort of way about him leaving. Uh, and now you're getting that typical... <laughs> you know... He, he, you know what I'm saying? Like, she's giving him that. Is like, she's right. We need to hurry. But still, her not saying anything to Guts or, you know, tr she's trying to not show any, emo any emotion towards him, which is, you know, her right. You know what I'm saying? Like, Griff Griffith was, it happened a year ago, the day after you left. He's like, I don't believe it, that Griffith would. Why? After you left, Griffith was really depressed. What I think is, it must have been over you, Guts. So he's like, hey, in one night, the glorious band of the Hawk, the mightiest military force in Midland became a wanted band of thieves. It's enough to make me laugh. But hey, don't let it go to your head. The reason this happened to Griffith Eight because of you. No way, not a chance. In one year, we've dropped a less than a 50 number. Some fell to the enemy, some left on their own. We can't even be called an army anymore. But it still could have been worse. If Casca hadn't become our leader, by now, a band of the Hawk without Griffith would have scattered to the winds. The band itself wouldn't exist. It's like she did. It's that like, not just that, I think we would have been wiped out that day 
if Casca hadn't taken command. She was amazing without any weapons, surrounded by close to 10 times our number. She rallied everyone on the verge of panic with arrows coming down like rain and led the vanguard in breaking through one side of the net. She continued to command us all to the end, not losing consciousness even with five arrow wounds. Yeah, she's a beast, man. So since then, Casca has been acting as our leader. Not one person opposed it after that terrific deed. To be honest, I think it's a little unfair to her, but we've got no room for any other option if we're to, if the Ox are to survive. Well, it's not all grim news. We haven't only been running around. Today, a report came from spies slipped into Windham that they found Griffith's location. We're soon going to move forward on a plan we've been going over the past year. We'll rescue Griffith. Everyone's still here is worn out. We've been chased around so badly. We are all covered mind. We're all covered mind and body with wounds. That's a weird way to write that. But <laughs> okay. So, but there's no one left who would try to leave. No one's been coerced into staying either. I'm wondering why Quarkus is staying around. I think he's like the guy that afraid to be alone by himself or whatever because i would think that out of everyone he would be the first to be like man i'm out y'all a trip <laughs> you know so in the end everyone here is far better or worse a hawk to the core courage and willpower alone aren't about to cut it especially not now we don't go just to save griffith we can't get started again without him It's a good thing, huh? You know, when the place you come back to hasn't changed, it's a good thing. On that note, what have you been doing this past year? Haven't rumors about the hawk spread to other countries? How come you didn't come sooner? It's like, yeah, right. It's like, I'm sorry, Rickard. I really didn't know, but, but how? Were you on a deserted island or something? It's like, I went into the mountains and swung this sword. It's like, mountain training practically was a deserted island. Wow, that's pretty old-fashioned. But, well, I guess it's your thing. You must be really crazy about it. So, did you find it? You know, honestly, I still don't know. But I found out one thing. No, I felt it. Seems like for me... Nothing but wielding this really feels true. There's no other answers. It feels natural. If you can say that with a straight face, then well done. So you got some new moves because, I mean, he was doing some of the ear pressure stuff that he just did. Like, anyway, you're coming back is proof we still had some luck left. I hope you'll help us, Raiders Captain. You mean former Raiders captain? Of course, Corcus. Oh my god. He's like, I won't recognize it. I don't know if it was for some dream or what, but he left on his own. He wasn't here when things were at their worst for us. Think I can call someone like that a comrade? Well, even if I close my eyes to the past, right now as strangers go, you're the real deal. At least get that straight. He's like, come on, Corcus. And Guts is like, I get it. And they're like, God damn. How long are you going to talk about this stuff? Come on over and let's have a drink. Guys, he's like, oh, yeah, Gaston. What about your clothing shop in Winham? Yeah, about that. I ran out on it. <laughs> you know, when I heard what happened to these guys, I couldn't just stay there. All it did was frustrate me. Same for you, right, Captain? He's like, wait a minute before that. What? About Casca. Thanks to those wounds a year ago, she spent three days and three nights in a comatose state near death. During that time, she had nightmares and called out over and over to Griffith and to you. She's pushing herself harder than it looks. She's always been one with too much on her shoulders. 
But there's nothing we can do. You can. Okay. So he's thinking about talking to her. So, so okay, so they're going to talk. Good. It's like, come with me for a bit. For a bit. Okay, new chapter. Confession. Defend yourself. It's like, hey, hold on. What's what's this about? It's like, we've hardly spoken in a year, and we're just going to have at it. Well, this is like you, but you got to be kidding. So she pulls her sword and goes after him. He dodges. He's like, time out. Hold on. Hey, that strike, you really tried to kill me. And she goes in again. He's like, she's serious. She goes in. He's like, oi, oi, don't mess around. Draw your sword. So he trips her. <laughs> so he trips her with ease. Like, come on now. <laughs> you know, it's like, what the hell's with you? Reckless as ever, I see. Tell me why. It's a little much for you to try to kill me when we haven't seen each other in a year. Is so she's like, why did you come back now? It's your fault. It's your fault. You destroyed all of it. It's your fault. So she's blaming him for what happened. It's like mine. Yes, Griffith, the Hawks, everything. You messed it all up. And he's like, how? It's like because you left us, because you abandoned Griffin, Griffith. It's like, wait a minute. You can't be serious. This is Griffith. Griffith, because I left, there's no way things could go wrong just from that, right? It couldn't be. You really are a complete fool, says Casca. They're still going at it. It's like, I thought I told you back then that someone who wants to accomplish something, if it's grand, endures that much more than other people do. Griffith had to make himself strong, but Griffith isn't a god. A person's heart can't be sustained by ideals and dreams alone. You, you made Griffith weak. He's no, Griffith's no good without you. Well, uh, that's the thing though, like, like as I was saying, as I was saying earlier, like, um, I don't think that I would blame Guts or, or saying like, they, you know, but there's, there's this weird connection between both of them, like from the way how Griffith was feeling from the last, from the end of the last volume and the way how, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I, I just don't want to think that he did what he did because of Guts. You get what I'm saying? As I said, he was thinking about Guts um, while he was laying with Charlotte. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, them saying that he was severely depressed ex it does explain a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's kind of like him losing his best friend, but he didn't want to say that. And that's one of the things that I, even today, I'm talking to people about. I'm like, never be afraid to tell people how you feel, especially in a situation like they're leaving and they want to hear you say those words. They want to hear you say, confirm certain things. Never be afraid to say it. Because you never know what can happen. You never know what you could hear that person say in return. So don't say how you feel. I know it's hard. You know what I'm saying? I know it's hard, but you just you, you just got to. You have to, man, because situations like this can happen. You know what I mean? So he grabs the sword. And so now he's kind of getting it. And he's like, that's crazy. You should have been able to dodge. Why? He's like, that's enough. Let go. Then, what else should I have done? He's like, idiot, let go. I only did what Griffith would have done. If we don't sta staunch the bleeding, it's like, I just did my own thing. What else should I have done? She's like trying to get him to let go of the sword because he's bleeding. So she 
falls to her knees. It is like, hmm, I know what you're saying is right. Really, I do. But I just can't take it anymore. I told you before that I want to be beside Griffith, that I want to be his sword. Yeah, I remember. That wasn't true. That the me who wished to become that way was bluffing. I'm sure I genuinely meant it at first, but one day I realized Griffith's not a god, and I am a woman. How easy would it be if I could just make my heart feel the way I want it to? I'm not stupid. I realize if Griffith set his sights on the throne of Midland, marrying Princess Charlotte would be his fastest shortcut, which is exactly what I was saying before. And knowing Griffith, I figured he'd be sure to take it someday. Maybe even what's happening now. I thought I could bear even this. I wanted to believe. If I couldn't be near him as a woman, as his sword, it would be alright so long as I could become something indispensable to the, to the realization of his dream. I wanted to believe. But I finally understood clearly that day a year ago that there was no longer room next to Griffith the way, the way there used to be. My dream had already ended. I can't do it anymore. Desperately trying to protect the band of the hawk, it's like going to disappear if I didn't at least cling to some fruitless hope. But enough's enough. I couldn't be a woman or something invaluable to keep on protecting the almost broken dream of someone who might not even be alive. I just can't. I'm so tired. You do the rest. Oh, uh, and she just, whoa, you are not about to fall off a cliff. What girl, you better stop. And guts grabs her before she falls over, of course. And there was one more, one more thing I realized that day. Though he destroyed everything, though he took all from me, even though I hate him, even now, though I feel like I want to kill him, I want to kill him. What the hell are you thinking? Look here, don't you ever go near a cliff again. I can't deal with being dragged off two or three times. <laughs> like you fool. You're always getting hurt. Always because of me. You're always bleeding. You're such a fool. fool are they finally going to kiss yay <laughs> yes this is what we've been waiting for and that was beautifully done that was beautifully done set the tone <laughs> you know what I'm saying set the tone and everything this is beautifully done uh, they're such a great couple in this story. It's not even funny. Like, well done, man. I finally realized that day that Morning Griffith brought to his knees from his first defeat. I couldn't tear my eyes away from him. That I didn't want to admit what I had become. It was like the me I had been since I met Griffith, like the feelings I had since then, would all be false. Afraid of all that I've lived by my sword, with the intent of sacrificing myself for my unrequited feelings for Griffith. There is no falsehood in the way I live, that alone was my pride, because it's what Griffith gave to me. Okay, so we're gonna have another... <laughs> another sex scene? <laughs> Oh my god.
God. <laughs> you know? So, we have Guts and Costco over here. Getting on with it. Okay. So, it's like you're shaking. You scared? I am. And she's like, I wonder if I'm going to wind up changing. If by doing this with you, everything from yesterday, everything I felt so desperately will become a lie. It's like what was important will fail, fade away and be gone. I'm such a coward. So um, Guts notices the scars on her body. Uh, these scars. They must be from the arrows a year ago. That ain't all. There's lots of little ones and big ones. She's like trying to cover up herself. It's like, what's the point in hiding them now? They're like medals for mercenaries, you know. But even I'm a woman. I know that. You get all jealous. You get mad fast and you're quick to hit. You're plenty womanly. <laughs> Thank you for telling her. I feel it to the bone. I get it already. I know how serious you were. Nobody lies their way into a body with this many scars. I understand. Did you know the jinx of the battlefield? If you spend too much time focused on the dead or broken, you'll find death perched on your shoulder. E was on yours earlier. Don't think about those things. Right now, all you need is to feel alive. I'm wondering if she's... Is that the reason why um, the author draw, like draws her with dark skin? I think she's a black woman. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, Cosmo comes off. She, 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 I'm thinking that she is a darker skin. Um, that's why... She, She's always shaded a little bit darker, I think. Um, she's like, I'll believe it. That my feelings for him now aren't lies. Yes, the, the two of you have been in love since y'all had that heart to heart for me. Took care of you when y'all fell over the cliff together. Like y'all had that going. Like the chemistry was there, and the author is doing an amazing job of portraying their chemistry in the story. Which led to, which led to this, which is awesome. So this volume is just, is you know, it's just straight porn. <laughs> it is, <laughs> it is, it, it 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 is a romance novel. In, in in such a profound way, it's a romance novel with drawings. This is what this is today. Okay, guts getting it on. I'm wondering if this is guts. It's not as. I mean, Gus was raped in the past, so is this his first official time? I don't know, because I don't think he went all those years without any. I'm pretty sure he laid with some woman while they were around the band of the Hawks, whatever, whatever. Great stuff. Not for YouTube, though. <laughs> you know, you got to get in there. Um, he, well, it's like, here I go. It's like, I'm getting down there now. To the <laughs> oh, my God. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Yo, this dude, bro. This is, I don't know. Is there any, you guys got to let me know if there's any other manga out there that, that's ever done this, that gets this buck wild. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this is crazy. So, he going in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, wait. He's like, please, a little, a little gentler. <laughs> So Guts is like, man, you know how long I wanted this? You gonna get this dick. <laughs> you gonna take it. Damn, bruh. Oh, damn, she is a virgin too. Why is she? Oh no, she's a virgin too? That's weird. It's very weird. I wouldn't think that she was, but she is. This is like, okay, so this is going on for quite a long time. And then, shit. 
he's remembering when he got raped. Ah, oh, shit. It's not a good thing, man. That's not good. He's remembering when he got raped. He's going to stop. Shit. He grabs her throat. Why is he doing that? Ah, PTSD, man. Oh my God, wounds, chapter two. So he's remembering when he got raped. More than likely, I hope he doesn't think it's her. Yeah, I'm saying because he's kind of like looking at the his. He's thinking that his. What is he going to do though? Is he, he he's choking her? And then he lets her go. What the hell is wrong with you, Guts? Guts, why? He's like, I didn't want that to happen. I didn't mean, I didn't mean to kill you, Gambino. Oh my God, he's still. Ah, man. Ugh. I hate this. I, I hate it. I don't like reading it because... I mean, this guy is just, he's a freaky, and this is why I'm telling you why this guy's a genius when he's writing. Because in the back of my mind, you get what I'm saying? In the back of my mind, this is something that happens in real life. See, if you have, if you have been sexually abused in the past, it's very hard for you to have a normal relationship with anybody sexually. It's either you're all the way out there. It's either you're all the way out there or you're extremely reserved. So it's like, there's really no in between and it's very hard to find that balance where you're never thinking about that stuff when, when you are in, it's tough, it's tough, it's tough. And trust me, man, I've known people that have been through sexual abuse as a kid uh, and you know it, it's so hard uh, I, I've been in relationships with people and it's 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 hard and it, it, it never lasts like it never lasts because it's always like she she was always too reserved and it, and it, and it was like it it ruins the the enjoyment it ruins the enjoyment because you're worried for her and she's worried that you're going to do the same thing for her. I mean, I've literally been slapped in the face, <laughs> like slapped in the face because she thought I was the guy that did it to her. And I'm like, but that wasn't me. But you have to understand, you have to comprehend where they're coming from. You know what I mean? So, so, so she's like, kill a big black shadow covered over me. He forced me, pinned down my arms and legs. So I'm guessing, so um, he needs to tell her and he needs to tell people that this happened. It is something that you need to tell somebody else. Like tell, I mean, I know it's not a proud moment, but it's like, I couldn't resist. Not as a child. I couldn't do a goddamn thing. Huh. So I murdered him. Made it look like death in battle from behind with a bow gun. That pig bastard. Gambino assaulted you? So you killed him? He's like, no, Gambino was different. I never meant to kill him, Gambino. He took me in when I was a baby and I almost died. He taught me the sword. So she's like, so why? Why, why do you sell me out to that pig bastard? He was always drinking, always after he lost his leg in battle. He talked to his dog, Shisu. Not once would he call out my name. He got drunk. He suddenly attacked me. I thought he'd avoid the, the blow. But when I look, there was my sword in Gambino's throat. My sword. He told me I should have died. I'm sorry, Gambino. Well, it was only father figure he had. He said I should have died 11 years before beneath my mother's corpse. 
Ah, <sighs> that's tough, man. That's tough. She tries to comfort him. It's like, uh, wow, Guts is crying again. That's crazy. This is like, sorry, I did something horrible. I'm sorry. This was your first time, but I did that. And she's like, I just, I can't just say forget it. Now that this has happened, I'll go now if you tell me to get lost. Otherwise, I swear. I'll make it up in battle. So she's like, Guts, you, eh, yes, I killed my father. I meant to get over it a long time ago. This past year, I didn't remember it one time. Why did it come back now? It's laughable. I've killed so many people, more people than I can count. So why? Why just this? Just Gambino, such. So she hugs him from behind. Gus is one that says, forget about it. It'll just be us licking each other's wounds. Fine. Even if that's all it is, fine. I've already shown you everything. All my weaknesses have been laid bare for you. Somehow I feel like we're finally even. You bled so much for me. These are wounds from the hundred man battle, right? Even the wound I gave you. Zach, licking wounds is good enough. I too want a wound that I can say you gave me. And she's like, I will change. Okay, she kissed him again. He said, maybe my place is within this man's heart. Not just being given to, maybe I can give something as well. Okay, so they go back to doing what they're doing. As I dozed off, for some reason I recall myself as a boy rubbing in the medicine Gambino gave me. Beside the boy, an oversized sword shined dimly. And that is the end. Ah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. This has been a welcome um volume for berserk man i loved it i loved every minute of this one and it went through smoothly it went through smoothly so make sure you go back to youtube check out the review because this one is gonna be spicy <laughs> it's gonna be spicy so um i'll see you guys for the next one of course if you're not going to go check that out even though i wanted to go check out the review and hear what i have to say Make sure you go ahead and check that out. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And as always, man, it's your boy Terry by Reacts. See you guys over there. All right. So I have to say, I have to say throughout these nine volumes of Berserk manga that this is far my favorite. I don't know why is it my favorite. Um... It's my favorite, not only, I think it's the best chapter, the best volume of storytelling that I've read so far. And the reason why is because it slowed everything down. There was no battles. There was a lot of dialogue. There was a lot of, um, there were battles, but it was very short lived. Um, you know, it's more of ambushes and, you know, little battles, guts coming to save the day. Um, it wasn't really much on a full on battle as we've had in previous chapters. Um, so let's talk about it, man. Griffith's situation. Griffith's situation. If we're going to look at that and say that Guts is responsible for this, which I don't believe so. I think, I think it had a small part to do with it, but not entirely. I, to be depressed and then go do something like this is, is, I wouldn't say it's far-fetched, 
but it was but it's kind of like to blame guts for all of this happening it's not you know what i'm saying it's just not feasible to me is you know what i'm saying so i think to throw away everything just because you lost basically let's say that's your best friend Right. To throw away everything like that, throw away your dreams, make it seem like you don't have anything to live for. It wouldn't have explained why he snuck into the room and then jump out the window to get caught. You get what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't make no sense. He wouldn't have tried to escape without getting caught. It just wouldn't have happened that way. You know what I'm saying? I would say that I don't I would say that the, the depression um caused him to make a stupid decision or do something unorthodox that he could have waited to do you know he was on track to do that anyways to to get in them draws so why you know what i'm saying like why jump the gun like that knowing that full well it's a possibility you could get caught like you know what i mean so um that's crazy but you know, the, the fall from grace, you know, is to me, it, it, you know, it's all his fault. Let me just get to that. It, it's his fault. It's his fault. And it's awesome, man. Um, it's not that he, him getting caught, like, I don't feel sorry for him. I feel a little bit sorry for, for Griffin because he doesn't deserve the torture that he's getting. And, and that all comes into play because of what we see, who the king really is. You know what I'm saying? Because he was a guy in the story that I really, like, was looking at. I was like, oh, this dude is, he, he's pretty good. I wouldn't like to see him die or anything. But now, he needs to, he, he needs to go. You know what I'm saying? Like, he needs to go. He's on that incest bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Wants to sleep with his daughter and shit like that. So, this chap, this, this volume was all about just a bunch of, <laughs> a bunch of stuff that you don't really want to see happen but then there's this one thing that happens at the end which i i didn't know that guts was was gonna reunite with the band of the ox somehow some way i didn't even realize that there was a time skip until, until a little bit later um during that chapter where he was at that tournament and i realized oh shit it's been a year now since um griffith i was like man they didn't even get a chance to go back and try to save him and now we don't know if Griffith is dead or he's alive the behelot was you know the torturer dropped it in the sewer or whatever um so there's that so I don't know what's gonna happen I really don't know but I really want to dive into it because I don't want to do a long long review but I do have um some thoughts um I want to also know about that prophecy that happened um, you know, in the beginning when he just left, you know, um, that, that skull head thing on a horse or whatever, um, that, um, that gave him that prophecy again. Um, so that's weird. I'm going to have to go back and check out that prophecy to see if it happened, um, to hold on. Let me see if I can go back really quick. Uh, I might be able to go back and check all the way up there, you know, so let me see if I can get back to that really quick while we're, while we're sitting here, Night of Skeleton. So let me see if the prophecy had nothing to do with anything that happened later in the, in the chapter, um, of what the dude said, cause it was like the first chapter of the volume, right? So let's see here let's go over back to prophecy one more time so the gears have have indeed begun turning one year he actually prophesied the whole damn thing he's like one year hence shall be the time of the eclipse you and your friends those yet unseen of the flesh of the flesh and that unkingly half of yours shall all be gathered then in that place unkingly half a torrent, a madness, a tempest of death, for which the human body could never atone, shall sweep over you. So he basically prophesied everything that happened in the later chapters because he reunited. I'm guessing the half, the unkingly half he's talking about is probably either Griffith or I don't want to say that's Casca. So it's like so, but take heed, struggler. 
You were born from a corpse and began your life from death in the mud. You are closer to death than anyone. Oh my god, this thing is frustrating sometimes. Okay, so struggle, contend, wriggle. That alone is a sort of one who confronts death. Never forget this. So he basically prophesied what was going to happen. I just, I'm, I'm just now, I was just kind of remembering what the prophecy was about. So I had to go back and look to see if it had nothing to do with anything that happened in, in, in the volume. Because um, I remember him talking about the one year from now. So that's why I went back to check it out. Just to kind of refresh myself on everything that he said. Um, pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool, man. He, but I'm pretty sure that he didn't know what it mean. I'm I'm kind of, it was kind of weird that he never reflected on it, though. You get what I'm saying? Like, nowhere in the chapter did he ever reflect, even though he reunited with the band of the Hawk, heard all that was happening. Immediately, maybe they should have shown, he should have shown a, a, um, a flashback of him remembering the prophecy of what he heard. But I guess he didn't remember. But great stuff, man. Great stuff. But in any case, when it comes on to... Um, Casca and Guts. I love their relationship. I, I, I do. I love you guys know that I, I've been wanting this relationship to happen for a very long time. And I'm glad, um, you know, I'm glad that it's official now that she finally realized that she loves him. Um, she, she realized it from that day, but she couldn't, she wanted to say something last chapter out of the last, the last volume ended. You see that she wanted to say something to him to try to get him to stay, but she didn't say anything. And that's one of the things that I was saying that, like, when you have something to say, man, say it because you never know you, she could, she might not have gotten that opportunity again. I know the reason why she attacked him was basically, you know what I'm saying? Trying to convince herself that nothing is going on there, but she couldn't, she couldn't do that. You know what I'm saying? She couldn't do that. You know, their relationship is, is so, is so pure. I, I love it to the fact where, um, they could basically build the rest of the manga based on their relationship and it would still be cool with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm a sucker for romance, so it's like, I love to see that stuff. I love when when things come together. Like, a lot of people, when it came on to Naruto, a lot of people were saying Naruto and Sakura should have ended up together, and I was like, hell nah. I, I was always with the Naruto, the Naruhina. You know what I'm saying? I was always with that relationship because I think it was the better relationship for Naruto. I Why would I want Naruto to end up with somebody who never loved him in the first place, you know what I'm saying, who never, who, you know, absolutely didn't, I mean, she cared about him, but she never loved him, you get what I'm saying, she was always, always in love with Sasuke, and it came to the point where, where, where Naruto wasn't doing, wasn't trying to get back Sasuke for her anymore, it was for him, it was always um, for, for him, you know what I'm saying? Like it was always for him, but Sakura just added that extra pe that extra pressure because of how he felt about Sakura. So, um, when it comes on to to the relationship that developed over time, because a lot of people saying there's no real feelings there between him and Inata, I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Naruto just never realized. It's kind of like what's happening right now with Casca. Naruto just never realized how much he actually loved Hinata. He was in denial because he never understood his feelings. And I'm glad they did. Uh, I would advise you guys to read the the um the novel. The I don't remember what they call them, but read the manga chap the manga chapters of the the situations that happen for um that happened in the last movie cuz the last movie they did it justice, but at the same time, it wasn't the greatest movie of Naruto by far. I love that movie. I actually, you know, I actually teared up during that movie because Naruto, you know what I'm saying? I finally get to see it on screen, but you know what I'm saying? Like their relationship was, it was meant to be. Um, I think, um, I think Kishimoto was setting that up from the get-go, but a lot of people couldn't see it because they can't relate to how that relationship started. You get what I'm saying? So, um, 
when it comes on to this man i i love this relationship it's very romantic um it's it's pure and in the back of my mind i kind of knew that the, the the thing that happened with him remembering that he got raped i was wondering is he gonna remember you know what i'm saying like in my back of my head i'm saying that to myself and then i saw it and i was like oh shit he's gonna remember and he's gonna stop or he's gonna start doing something stupid because that had happened to me before as i was explaining that i actually got slapped in the face because at some point she just thought it was me i was the one that was abusing that abused her in the past she thought it was was happening all over again it was a crazy thing you know what i'm saying um but i understood i got it i never got irated and be like why are you doing that or got mad at her i just understood you know what i'm saying which is what Costca did for him which is awesome man so now they can kind of move on but he's still gonna have to deal with those demons one way or the other i'm glad that he told her in so not so many words what happened <laughs> you know but it is what it is man this volume was awesome i think it's my favorite so far out of all the nine and it's not because of the porn stuff <laughs> it's just it was well written it was a well written complete volume a great body of work so i do appreciate that so if you guys loved it as much as i did man make sure you hit that like button make sure you subscribe to the channel and also leave a comment in the comment section let me know but, you know, I know it's been a long time, guys. So what I'm going to do is it's going to be out on the Patreon first. And then you guys will get it the day after, okay? I'm not going to let, let you guys wait until Thursday to get this one. So just look out for it. It should be out um, tomorrow, okay? So thank you guys so much. And I will catch you guys next time right here for some more Berserk manga, man. Appreciate it. Peace and love. See you guys later.